This is the Trading Psychology Podcast. This is VP, creator of No Nonsense Forex and author of the book No Nonsense Forex Trading Psychology. And with me, as he is every week, it's Rob Reinhold. Well, hello, everybody. This is Rob from Maverick Trading, Maverick Currencies, and now the Flatter Trading Society, where we pick random trades and we just do strict position management to see if we can make a profit. Uh, the first month has been off to a bang. We're already up about 4% in the mid part of the month. We've had a couple of lucky ones go our way. I'm sure this will moderate over time, but it's been really fun to watch. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah, again, uh, it's, as we said here on the show before, don't get too far ahead of yourself if you start out early. I'm really interested to see where this goes. Um, but for episode 40, uh, this is going to be mostly a Rob episode. And when he, when he presented this to me, when I saw the outline, my first thought was, Rob, seems like we've talked about a lot of this stuff in the past, um, but you assured me that wasn't the case. So let's go ahead and get into this and kind of let it play out and see how it goes. I really wanted to talk about this because I read some of the comments on some of our videos recently where I have been talking about one of the things I'm the most proud of in my trading is that I no longer trade my opinion. And I've had a lot of people that have agreed with me like, oh my gosh, you're right. I have a hard time doing it. So I really wanted to do an episode on how to do it. How can you have an opinion? How can your opinion be that prices are going higher and your actions be that you're selling something short? How can you do that? So let's now talk about beliefs. Let's talk about truths. Now I'm going to go into the world of Buddhism Please do not take any of what I'm saying as that I know anything about Buddhism. I did a Google search. I read up on some stuff and I thought, oh, this will be a good way to segue into this. I'm sure those of you who know Buddhism well, you're going to say, Rob, that's not what the two truth doctrine is really about. I understand that, but I want to make this about trading. So there is something in Buddhism called the two truth doctrine. And things can be true and be completely opposite. They have what's called a provisional truth or a relative truth and an absolute truth. Now we do this all the time as human beings. We have the ability to hold two truths that are completely opposite, all based on factual data. Let me give you an example. So let's say you are sitting in a room in a house and the temperature in that room is 85 degrees. Ooh, that's pretty hot. That is a pretty hot, uncomfortable room. You start sweating. It's not great. So that is true. You are sitting in a hot room. However, there's a huge, massive fire outside from a volcano and magma is going by the window and outside it's something like 4,000 degrees. So based on an outside observer, they could be looking at your claim that the room was hot as ridiculous. That's not true. Your room isn't hot at all. Look at the outside temperature. That's hot. But to you, it's hot. So do you see how relative to what you're looking at, both things can be true based on your perception of them? We do that all the time in the market. So let's say that you look at a chart on the Kiwi and the Kiwi has just been falling for months and months and months. And it's the lowest it's ever been. And your belief is the Kiwi is undervalued. The Kiwi is traditionally undervalued here. And every time it's got down to this level, it's had a nice bounce over the next six months. Can you go short? Can you go short with the belief that the Kiwi is undervalued? That's what this episode is about. Can you still go short? How about this one? In 2021, I talked with all of our traders, say, Rob, we're in a bubble. I said, I know it's amazing, isn't it? I'm so excited. We're in a bubble. Let's go long. And they're like, no, Rob, we're in a bubble. It's going to pop. All bubbles pop. And I said, look, I know. I love it when bubbles pop. But right now we're going long. Can you do that? That's what this episode is about. I want to help you get over the bridge to where you can do that yourself in your world of trading. Before we jump into it, I'm going to talk about personality styles. So there are two personality letters that are going to have a harder time with this than others. So if you took our trader personality test based on the Myers-Briggs, you're going to come up with four letters in your personality type. Let's talk about the second letter. There are S's and there are N's. 
There are sensors and intuitives. If you are an S, you are a detail-oriented person. You like to see all the details involved. And in your brain, when all the details are connected, it's like I always give this example. If you're an electrician and you put the switch in correctly, you run the line correctly and you have the light on, that switch will work every single time. And if it doesn't, there's something wrong with the connection. If you're an S, you're going to have a very hard time compartmentalizing because in your world, it's a binary outcome. If the light isn't working, it's because there's something wrong. It's binary. The other one is the last letter, the letter J, which is binary as well. You see the world in good and bad. You see the world in right and wrong. So J's are going to have a really tough time with how do you trade separately within your opinion because you see black and white. You don't see the in-betweens. So Patrick, you're a J. So you are on the spot here. So I'm going to ask you a trading riddle as a J. And let's see if you can get this trading riddle. There are three traders that are arguing. The first trader says, it's going higher. The price is going higher. The second one says, you're wrong. The price is going lower. And the third one says, you're both wrong. The price is going sideways. Who is right? Um, my answer would be, how the hell would I know? That is actually the correct answer. Because they can all be right. Now, when you heard that, if you and your brain said, well, someone's right, someone's wrong, you most likely see things in a binary way, in a binary way, because you say, oh, no, someone's going to be right and someone's going to be wrong in here. Actually, two people are going to be wrong and one person's going to be right. But the question is, can all three be right? Is that possible? What do you think about when you really think about it now? I actually don't know. Um, so I'm intrigued to see where you go with this. Well, let's talk about time frame. Let's say the first trader was trading over the next hour. The second trader was trading over the next day. And the last trader was trading over the next month. Can they all be correct? In that case, yes. Could they all be wrong? In that case, also, yes. So the real difference was compartmentalization. And the way you can trade it against your opinion is to compartmentalize things. And the easiest way to do this is with time frame. Now, look, there's other ways that you could do this, but I want to do the fastest, easiest way for this podcast. You can work on other ways. But how can you do a different action? How can you get your brain to believe two contradictory things and still take action? Now, most human beings... When you get two signals, one good, one bad, you typically get indecision. You typically say, oh, I can't do anything. And that's what is typically going to happen. When you look at your opinion, the markets are going lower here. And then you look at the price action and you don't see any bounces. Most of the time, that signal of, okay, my relative opinion doesn't match up with my absolute opinion. You typically get inaction and you don't do anything. Really stubborn people, they will just follow their gut. They will follow their absolute truth that the market is going lower and they'll buy a falling market anyway. Uh, that becomes very dangerous and a lot of people have tried this, myself included, and we found that it is detrimental to our health. That's called counter trend trading, Patrick. What's your opinion on counter trend trading? Well, as a trend trader, obviously I'm not really for it, but it, it's I'm, I'm starting to see where you're going with this now. And... And let me know if I'm on the right path too. So the example I want to give here for no nonsense Forex traders is how many of you are guilty of the following? You're trading the daily chart. You got a long signal. Everything says go, but you, you reach over and you sneak over to the one hour chart just to see where, what it's doing. And the one hour chart is actually giving you a short signal. So even though you know that you're supposed to be going long right now. Something in you says, ooh, maybe I shouldn't do it just yet. As any no-nonsense Forex trader knows, that is the wrong way to trade. <laughs> that is exactly how you miss on big winners. But 
who here has been guilty of that before or might even still be guilty of that right now? That is a fantastic example, and that really works with, within what I'm trying to teach in this episode, is that these are different beliefs. These are literally opposite beliefs. How can you still take action while having two true opposite things? And the answer is compartmentalization. You need to be able to compartmentalize in your brain. Some people are going to have an easier time doing this than others, but you need to give yourself the right. This is the first thing. You need to give yourself the right to believe in two contradictory things and have them both be true. You, you first of all have to get your brain to the point where you are allowed to do that. Most people don't allow their brain to do it. Most people say that is not possible. And this is where I got into the J's and the S's. They really don't like to give their brain the permission to believe in two contradictory things because that goes against almost every fiber in their being. Everything is binary. Everything is right or wrong, good or evil, left or right. And to be able to believe that they're both right or they're both left is going to be very difficult. Well, okay. So do you think that's the fact that we see things in black and white? Or do you think that's maybe that we just don't want things to become overly complicated. Because this goes back to what I've always told people about multi-time frame trading. So I would go back and forth with people early on in my channel's life cycle about multi-time frame trading. People were convinced that that was the best way to go. They would state their reasons why, and those reasons made a lot of sense. But what I would tell them is, I'm not saying anything you're, you're saying is untrue. What I am saying is you're really going to end up overcomplicating things. And you're going to run into a situation like we're talking about in this episode. You know, so I guess my only pushback would be maybe it's not the fact we see things in black and white. Maybe we just want to keep things simple. And and by, you know, by throwing more time frames out there in this particular example, it, we're just adding a lot of noise. I 100% agree with that. And if that is something you cannot do, then you should never look at a one hour chart. If you find that your one hour chart is spoiling your trades on your daily chart because you don't allow yourself to believe two different things at once, then yes, it's absolutely best to keep it simple and never check any different time frames. But think about a trader who is ready to go on the daily chart. You've got a signal ready to go on the daily chart. They're able to look at the hourly chart and say, oh, you know what? I'm going to wait 30 minutes for this hourly chart to change and they can implement their strategies that they've predetermined successfully. That is okay. That is okay for that person. However, if you're the person that says, I checked the hourly and I don't like it, so I walk away from the whole trade, then yes, you're correct. You should never check it because you are not giving your brain the permission to believe in two different things. And that's what this is really about, is about how do you compartmentalize? So I'm going to really use time frame as the simplest way to trade against your opinion. So let's talk about opinions you may have. You may have an opinion that the Bank of England is going to raise rates more than expected at the next meeting. That is your core belief in your trading. Now, why do you believe that? I don't know. I don't know how you got there. You probably read some blogs. You probably thought to yourself, you probably know someone in England who told you something, whatever it is, that is simply a belief. If you can compartmentalize time frame, now all of a sudden you can take a look at the pound and you can say, okay, well, I have this belief that in the next meeting that's four weeks away, the bank of England's going to raise rates but I'm just going to be trading it over the next week. I can compartmentalize that and I can put my belief of a stronger pound somewhere in the background and really just focus on current price action. And I think that's a really good example too, because um, it, we talk about avoiding news on no nonsense Forex and, and an interest rate uh, news would, would fall into that category. So, and I, I don't know, I've already forgotten if I've even, talked about this in the past, but let's, let's say you have that, 
interest rate decision coming up, but it's not for another three or four days. And you're getting the signal to go long on the pound. What do you do? You know, do, do you want to have to do you want to be in this trade for a few days and then have to stop according to our rules because of this? You know, that's uh, that's a real thing. And that's the tool I'm giving everyone here is time frame, time frame. You can choose to compartmentalize this pound trade and say, hey, I know this is coming up. My belief is there's going to be a big jump, but I'm going to allow myself to go short pound fully knowing that I have a three day window. Do you see how that gives your brain the ability to still believe in the pound, maybe taking a big jump off the interest rate statement, but allows you to play the pound short in the time going up to it. If that's what the price action says, you have to be able to compartmentalize your core beliefs with what the, what the price action is likely to be within your time frame. Just think about the things we talked about. The market's in a bubble. Guess what? That has no time frame. The Kiwi is undervalued. That has no time frame. Gold looks like it's too high. That has no time frame. A lot of your core beliefs don't have any time frame to it whatsoever. You have to understand that. And then you have to be able to say, well, I can still trade the opposite of that because the time frame is different. These are just ideas I have. Time frame is going to allow you to trade against your opinion. No, and this is exactly why I tell all of my traders that we generally need to avoid most fundamental analysis because while all of these things might be true, we have no idea when they're actually going to take effect. Even major news, you know, was it already priced in? Is a little bit of price movement one way going to trigger algorithms for all these hedge funds? Like, you know, how many days is that going to take? You know, sometimes big things will happen, but they won't take effect until days later. And you don't know when that's going to, when that's going to be the case and when that's not going to be the case. And the people who put all these, you know, the people who specialize in, um, in telling you the news are always going to be looking back at these things in hindsight. So it, it, they're just, they're not helpful. None of this stuff at the end of the day is helpful. It's more harmful. And that's why I've always said to get rid of it for the exact same reasons you're saying, Rob. Yes, news happens. News does affect the market. Fundamental analysis does affect the Forex market. Yes, we just don't know when. So it's better to just avoid it altogether. I will absolutely agree with that. However, we're all human beings and all things happen. We need to all admit that we already have a bias on everything. Now, whenever I go shopping with my wife, she always asks me like, oh, do you like that? And I say, no, I hate it. Or yes, I like it. And she would always get disappointed if I tell her I hated it because she wanted to get it. And they say, well, now I can't get it. And I'm like, look, I have an opinion on everything, but that doesn't mean I care about everything. You need to have the same opinion in trading. You have an opinion on everything. I promise you, somewhere in your body, you have a bias towards whatever's going on at whatever it is you're looking at. Admit you have a bias. Just admit it. That's the thing you need to do. Admit you have a bias and then compartmentalize that bias over here and be like, the chart says do this. I'm going to go with the chart. That's how you do it. So compartmentalizing and trading. And again, time frame is the key. Now, Patrick, I'm sure you had this situation before. I've had this happen to me all the time. I trade lots of different strategies. I have lots of different accounts. Each account has a different strategy and a different time frame to it. I will find myself long in one account and short in another account in the same asset. Now, has that ever happened to you or like similar assets? Um, it is, but let me clarify. Like I said, I'm, I'm very regimented. So I, I only trade the daily chart. And on some instruments, I do trade the weekly chart, but different instruments than I trade on the daily. So where this is coming to play for me is what when it, we cross over from investing over to trading. So I'm forever long on gold until there comes a day where I'm not. Um, but I've made very good money shorting gold. And so it's emotionally, it's kind of a, it's kind of weird because no matter what gold does, I win. 
And no matter what gold does, I also lose. So I'm kind of like rooting for the trade to win because long term, I feel like it's it's a, it's just a matter of time before gold goes up. Um, but yeah, in that particular case, I do. An actual trading trading, I don't. Does that make sense? It absolutely does. And for anyone who's played fantasy football and you're in multiple leagues, this happens all the time where you need your guy to do well, but in your other league, you're playing against the guy that has your guy on his team and you need him to do poorly. It sucks when you get in that situation. So any of you fantasy football guys or girls, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. But again, you need to allow yourself. You need to allow yourself to be bullish in your investments in gold and you need to allow yourself to go short in your trades in gold. And that's a very difficult thing for some people's brains to do. The first thing you have to do is you have to give her permission. And the easiest way to give her permission is to look at everything in different time frames. Everything's in different time frames. Well, I'm long term gold, I'm medium term uh, gold short, but I'm short term gold long. You should be able to have that viewpoint and have that make sense in your mind. Because if you can do that, then all of a sudden you can take a short term trade that's based on the chart. You can take a medium term trade that's based on the chart and you can hold your long term investments based on whatever it is you made those long term investments. But if you don't allow yourself to do that, you are in a box. You will only be long gold all the time and you're not trading. You're just trading your opinion. So the last thing I wanted to end up with here is how do you play these big macro ideas and trends in trading? And I'm going to use crypto as a great example of this. We had a lot of people that got early on in crypto and for them, it was an investment and they rode them all the way up to the top. And because they were investment, they rode them all the way to the bottom. How could they do it differently? And I want to tell a story, a really cool story about Mark Cuban. Uh, for any of you who don't know who Mark Cuban is, he is a really rich guy, but he made his money. He owned a company called Broadcast.com. And he owned this company. It was one of the first dot-com companies. And he sold out in 1999 to Yahoo. And he sold out for like $5 billion. Now, Mark Cuban didn't get $5 billion. He got $5 billion in Yahoo stock. Now, he sold his company because he knew that the dot-coms were in a bubble. Yahoo was in a bubble too, and he just got Yahoo stock, which is in a bubble. So what did he do? He bought put options on his stock. He actually was required to hold the stock, but even if he wasn't, he could have still hold that stock fully knowing it's in a bubble and then buy puts to protect the downside to where if the bubble did crash, he profited. If it kept going, he made money. He was still bullish on Yahoo. He wanted to be a shareholder in Yahoo, but he allowed himself to buy those puts. Those puts saved him somewhere around three and a half billion dollars at the end of the day. You have to be able to get your mind to the place where you can trade short term, however you want to trade and still hold these long term beliefs. You should be able to hold Bitcoin and at some point sell it short in another account. You just need to be able to have that ability as a trader. Or, and I'm going to throw this wild concept at you, Rob, maybe those people who are holding 100% of their Bitcoin position all the way up and then continue to hold it all the way down, maybe should have taken a little bit of profit on the way up. I mean, isn't that just as good as, as, as hedging like you're talking about? Absolutely. But we all know that they had no plan going into the investments. So it's really difficult to make a new plan when you're right in the middle of all the emotions. That's like the worst time to develop a trading system is when you didn't build it in the beginning and now you've got a ton of pressure with money on the line, it's a terrible time to make decisions. Uh, no, you're right. And it's something we cover in the investment podcast I do to where like when something brand new like this happens, you know, like we talked about before with AI, the very first thing we think is, oh, this is just how it's going to be all the time. When in reality, no, there's boom and bust cycles to everything. So yeah, but when you're in the boom, it's the, the narrative and the emotion and the crowd support that you're getting is really, really hard to overcome. I get it. It's hard to ever go short something like that. Even though you know you're going to get signals, what do you do in that situation? So I, I think this was a good episode for that. Yeah. And let me just end with what I've said this whole time. 
you have to give your brain permission. You, you have to work on this. Can you believe two opposite things and still take action on one of them? You have to get to that point. It is so important in trading because we've talked about trading without bias. You should have absolutely no bias when you click that button. There should be nothing in your brain. The problem is there's always going to be something in your brain. That's what this whole trading psychology podcast is about, is about flushing those biases out and trying to take the most objective action as we possibly can. And by separating things out in different timeframes, you're giving your brain the ability to buy a bubble by fully 100% believing that this bubble is going to burst and pop. You're giving yourself permission to do that. And it's going to make your trading so much easier. So on that note, traders, um, if you're listening to this on YouTube, or even if you're not, go to YouTube and let us know down below, are there any situations similar to what we've just talked about today that you continue to struggle with? Or were some of these situations affecting you in the past? What were they? And what did you do to get over them? You can listen to us talk and give you our solutions all day, but sometimes it helps to have the community chime in as well. So I'm interested to see what you all have to say down below in the comments section, but we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Thank you all for listening to episode 40 of the Trading Psychology Podcast, and Rob and I will see you next week. Goodbye, everybody.